Who is it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't know you guys were going to be dropping by. Come on in. <laughs> All right. So this is the studio, Brownstone Recording here in Nashville, technically Brentwood, Tennessee. And uh, this is the tracking room. Come on in and uh, have some kits stacked up over here. But I uh, have my, my drum kit that I use most often just set up right here, mic'd up mic'd up and ready to go at any given moment. Uh, I've got uh, a bunch of snares here for options and tones and uh, you know whatever a client might need. I do have a control room in another part of the, uh, the building, but I've rigged it out here so I have a, uh, a mouse and keyboard and uh, a monitor so I can run the computer and they're all the recording right from the drum kit. Well, come on through here. This is, uh, you know, any recording studio, you have to have a place for musicians to eat. So that was a priority. We had, uh, so we put a little kitchenette in here, coffee machine, you know, all the usual suspects, so. But here's the control room. This is where uh, all the preamps and the main computer is located. Uh, because there's no real direct window to the, uh, the drum kit in the, in the tracking room, I put in a uh, LCD monitor with a camera out there so you can kind of see the drum kit and a client can watch. They enjoy that, seeing what's actually going down. I don't know why. But, uh, but here we got uh, preamps, compressors, Pro Tools, converters, and uh, keyboard if you want to program anything, and some modules. And I, you know, these are more antiquated now. Most everything is virtual. Uh, but uh, I got three sets of monitors, uh, uh, audio monitors. So uh, when we're in mix mode, we have uh, a lot of different uh, ways of listening to uh, the music. So, man, one of the biggest things about getting professional sounds I've learned and sometimes the hard way I've learned is that you really can't skimp on the chain which is the chain meaning from the mic to the preamp into the computer. Um, the mics need to be quality and fortunately today uh, because of technology man there's a lot of great mics out there available that are a lot more affordable than you know say buying like a C12 or spending fifteen thousand dollars on a tube microphone. There's a lot of other options out there at this point. But here I've got all the, uh, the preamps and compressors that I use on the drums and uh, we also track you know other instruments here as well, basses and guitars and vocals and whatnot. And well you know these all apply to most anything but I like uh, Neve style uh, preamps. These Vintex emulate a Neve sound pretty well which is Neve characteristics are kind of uh, fat and warm and um, transients tend to be a little bit slower. But I also have some, uh, like here's some API preamps which tend to be a little more aggressive sounding. I use an API and a snare and uh, I've got some uh, universal audio stuff and some old vintage ADMs that were taken out of console. Distressor compressors, uh, 1176 compressors. A real cool thing I use a lot is this transient designer. Uh, which is, it helps it kind of shape the actual tone, attack, and sustain of each drum. Uh, I have them on the toms and kick and snare. So if you want to get a little more thwack out of the snare without over compressing it, you can add a little bit of attack or uh, tighten it up and bring out some of the ring if you want with the, uh, with the transient designer. So, well, you know, it's, I've spent a lot of time in, you know, uh, studios, professional commercial studios through the years, and you start seeing a lot of the same type of gear used and uh, there's a reason why people use Neves and people use APIs and people use distressors and 1176 is because they sound great and uh, so I was, most of the time you, I just take my cue from what I've seen used historically and has been successful historically so uh, the, you know the downside is that it can be a money pit <laughs> you start with one nice pre and the next thing you know you're you know 12 pre's in and uh, <laughs> your wife is freaking out and <laughs> But uh, but there you go. There's the collection I have so far. You know. <laughs> well, you know, I do a bit of producing and uh, and mixing, and I have found you know I kind of grew up with Logic, Logic Audio actually, and so I use Logic quite a bit. But for tracking, uh, the Pro Tools HD, it's just really hard to to beat that. I don't need a some sort of a desk for pre-conversion monitoring, or there's never a latency issue. 
uh, it just seems like it's, it's rock solid. It never crashes for me. You know, knock on wood. Uh, watch, it'll just completely go down right now. <laughs> but uh, for tracking, it's really hard to beat uh, the Pro Tools thing. So, but oftentimes, I'll do pre-production like in Logic, uh, programming and whatnot. And, uh, and sometimes, I'll even mix in Logic. After we get done tracking everything, we'll throw it in Logic and mix from there. I do. I mean, I do have, I have a lot of Waves plugins, a lot of different, uh, you know, it can get extremely expensive. So, and uh, I'm a firm believer in not using hacks. So, it's <laughs> I know a lot of people are, but I'm not one of them. So, I, because I, I just see how that, the ramifications of ripping off software, it's just like ripping off music, is downloading music and somebody doesn't get paid. So, uh, at any rate, I'm a big fan of the Wave stuff. Uh, Plugins and uh, you know the SSL uh, compressors and the emulated uh, the Universal Audio stuff is great too. I've got one of those and um, there's a lot of options out there. The, but the big deal really is if you don't have a good signal recorded initially, it's really hard to prop it up with you know effects or virtually. So it's always good to get a a great signal primarily, and then you can deal with it later. You can fix minor problems you know later. The conversions, uh, converters I'm using, the 192 and the Lynx uh, Aurora uh, converters. And uh, I got a Universal 2192 I'm clocking everything with. And it sounds like a lot of techno jargon. I don't know if anybody knows that, but. This is a uh, isolation booth I use a lot for, um, man, for many purposes, uh, primarily vocals. But uh, the last thing we're doing here is overdubbing an acoustic guitar. And this is a, a tube mic uh, made by a company called Big. And uh, it's an awesome sounding mic. Uh, but uh, here's a headphone monitoring system. And oftentimes we'll put guitar cabinets in here or whatever. It's like a multi-purpose, tiny, tiny room. You know, you can lock your children in here if they're bad. And nobody will hear them because it's completely sonically isolated. So, no, I don't put my kids in here. But I've thought about it. <laughs> <laughs>